making the warp out of watercolor paper wound on a row. Watercolor paper purchased on a long row has the advantage of being cut to the size you need it for your project. It is also often less expensive than purchasing it sheets at a time. There is a natural warp on the paper that has been wrapped around a row. This video demonstrates how I shaped the paper to remove the warp and trimmed it into folios and signatures for my watercolor journal. This video is in real time so you can more easily understand the process. Hi there. This is a hint video. I want to show how I got from this to this. I am creating a watercolor art journal just for my own use and I have cut my paper from, I bought this row of Hansen Montval watercolor paper and it came on a row five yards by 48 inches and I paid about $30 for it. I think the similar price you can get at Dick Blick and probably at some of the other outlet stores, art stores, Cheap Joe's and that type of thing. This paper is 140 pound, most likely what you would consider a student grade paper. This is not an artist grade paper which can run up into the hundreds of dollars. But I'm just creating a mixed media art journal sketchbook. It came on a big roll that looks like, <laughs> like this. Can't even get it all on my desk. And that's why I cut it into my folios so that I can make my signatures. But that's why you see all this bounce in here because this paper has been wrapped around that roll and it's got that natural warp to it now. So what I want to do is show you how I got from this to this in a relatively short amount of time. What I did first is, of course, I have my paper cut into signatures. These measure 18 inches. Each page width is 9 inches. A double page width is 18 inches by 12 inches. I am going to trim that down. Make sure that my pages are stacked. I'm going to put this out of the way. I am going to trim this down. You want to get your signatures in there as nice and neat as possible without getting paper cuts on your hands. And I want to trim them down so that the pages are fairly even like they are here. This has already been trimmed. So I have these clamps. We'll clamp it here and that's pretty good I'm going to clamp it here now there are some marks in here that after I get this these signatures all sized and flattened out I will take my needed eraser and clean up all the little marks around here. But the first thing I want to do is trim my pages so I don't have these rough margins. And I am trimming them from a width of 9 inches to a width of 8 and 3 fourths inch which is only takes off a quarter of an inch, but that quarter of an inch makes a difference. So I'll mark it down here. Let me flip it around here. And then I just draw a light line here. And here again, these lines will all be cleaned up when I, after the signature is all 
flatten down. Make sure that you have a fresh blade in your knife, whatever you use. This is just a utility knife. But I did, I did just snap off that blade. I like these blades that snap off because I feel like I get more bang for the, my buck out of them. When they get dull, I just snap it off and go to the next one. I do try to keep, for when I'm cutting something like this, realize that you're cutting through several thicknesses of paper. So I do keep my blade out there. I don't keep it down like this. I put it out there as far as it will allow me without breaking off the blade, which is usually just one notch there. One notch above that little diagonal line. Now since I've got just a 12 by 12 cutting mat here when I'm cutting this long sheet, I always turn my square cutting mat diagonal so it looks like a diamond. And then I have more cutting space here. You want to keep a firm grip on your ruler, especially once you start cutting. And what I do is I make one pass just to kind of give it a place to hold on to keeping my blade as close to this ruler as possible. Try not to let your blade go off that way because that spoils the cuts. And I go slow. I go slow because I find if I go fast, I get too cocky about it and I mess up. If you just go slow, put, you don't have to put a really hard pressure if your blade is sharp. You just have to, and then as these, as it cuts through the layers, I just kind of push them away so they don't get in the way. But see how firm I'm holding this ruler? Try not to let it slip. And if you go slow, your knife is less likely to slip. And down here, see my blade kind of already has wandered out into that margin there. You want to keep your blade as close to your ruler as possible and go slow. Don't try to don't try to hurry through this. And you can feel it while you're cutting. You can feel it cut through the layers. And you can feel it when it's reached the bottom, when it's reached the mat. It's no longer cutting paper. You can feel that. Now, my blade kind of wandered away here. It's not too bad. If you want, you can take a, a sanding block and just kind of sand that away. That will even it up a little. So now I want to cut it. Did a pretty good job. Like I said, it wandered away just a little here, but it's still, I'll sand, I'll sand that some more. But it's still a nice clean cut. Now, I think that I want to cut on the top side here. So I'm just going to take my bulldog clip and put it over on this side. And I'm going to measure 11 and 3 fourths. Get these little tags out of the way. I'm going to measure 11 and 3 fourths. Eleven and three fourths, and I like to turn it here. And eleven and three fourths, and I do like to draw a line here. It just helps me when I'm cutting. It's not really necessary if you hold your ruler tight, but sometimes my ruler needs to be. 
it shifts and I need to set it back onto that line. Okay, so now I'm ready to cut this way. So the same thing, hold your ruler tight as you can. It's a little bit easier on a shorter width than a longer width. Especially if you've got, like me, I've got pretty long fingers. If you have short fingers and small hands, it's a little bit harder. It's hard enough when you have <laughs> long hands, <laughs> long fingers. So, and here again, go slow. Keep your blade against the ruler. And make your initial cut. You don't have to bear down real hard, especially if you have a nice sharp blade in there. The thing about this is I feel these double pages kind of flip up on me here. Way. There we go. It's a pretty nice cut. And the more you do this, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. It's a nice clean cut, if you ask me. Now the next thing I do is, while I still have my pages in their signature like I want them to, with a very light pencil lead, I number them. I'll go back later and erase these numbers. But I need to know which folio is my outside folio so that I can restack them in the same order. So that's one, two, three, and four. It's not necessary to number the bottom ones because you got them on here. Okay. Let's get all these little scraps out of the way. At this point, I remove my cutting mat. I don't need my knife anymore, so I close it up. I keep my bulldog clips out. You might want to get a paper towel out because we'll be using that later. But I do need my ruler. I need my heat gun. And I need a water mister that will mist a fine spray. And I've been using this one. I tested it. This is one I use. You can tell it's got all sorts of acrylic paint on it. Use it all the time, but it does a good job. Okay, now I'm going to take the pages one at a time, starting at the inner page, which would be number four, and pull it out and set it like this. Look at that. How can we work on that? <laughs> so I'm going to just kind of flatten my page out. My number's up here, number four. And I take my water mister. All of a sudden here is just plain tap water. If you're if you want to put distilled water in there, you can. It's kind of up to you. I don't have distilled water. I just use tap water. I only do one side of the page at a time. So I usually start on this side. And then you don't need a lot of water. You just want to lightly mist it. Just enough to dampen that page. You can kind of see here where I've sprayed how much I have. Then I take my ruler, and I like to hold it diagonal like this because that holds the whole length and width of the paper down. And I take my heat gun. And once this, once this paper gets heated and starts laying flat, then you'll see I'll move my ruler over here and work on this. It does not take long to do this.
and this is watercolor paper. Uh, it will take it will take getting wet. This is what it's for. <laughs> still damp and that's okay. It's okay for it to be a little bit damp yet. You don't have to dry it completely dry, but look at the difference. Look how nice this is starting to lay flat. It's not absolutely flat yet, but it's still damp too. And look at this. See the difference? This is what we're going for. I usually flip my page around and do the other side. Now at this point, since you've seen what I'm doing, I'm going to go through the rest of these folios, and I'm going to do that on this video, but I'm going to speed through them because you've seen what I'm doing. You know, clean up your paper if you keep your paper as clean as possible. You've seen what I'm, I'm doing, so there's no sense in going through it slow for the entire video. Okay, I've just finished with the first folio. I did them from the inside to the outside, starting with number four, three, two, and this is one. One is still kind of damp, and that is perfectly okay. Because what we're going to do, I do want to point out something. If you look here on number two, right down there, while I was spraying this water on there and drying it, I noticed a mark. And that paper was wet, and I took my rubber, er my kneaded eraser, and I was trying to remove that mark, and it cut into the paper. So that's something that if you're going to, I'm just going to sand it a little here. If you are, if you're going to remove marks on your paper, do it when it's dry. Okay, so I have a rather damp folio, but it's nice and flat. I don't have that jumpy puffiness. So what I'm going to do now is, and I mean light, really light, just one or two swishes of water here. Don't spray it and get it soaking wet. Just a couple of swishes. And I mean very, very light, just enough to, to get a little bit of water on the paper. And, and I do mean light, not, not soaking wet. And you want to do this on both the inside and the outside, so you're going to go through all the pages. You're just putting some moisture in there. Just enough to dampen it. Sort of like... Um, not quite, but if you've ever dampened clothes before you iron them, you know how, I don't know if in the days of when we didn't have polyester and <laughs> non-ironing clothes, when we had those linen and cotton blouses, we would take a, a, a bowl of water and we would dampen those clothes. And that would get it nice and damp so that when you would iron it, it'd come out really nice and smooth. So that's what I did here. It's just put some moisture on the paper. Now, 
what I'm going to do is this paper towel that that I tore off I'm going to tear it in half it doesn't have to be exact and I'm just going to put it here because my paper's wet and I just want it to kind of protect the marks from the bulldog clip and I'm going to clip it right here and right here just enough to hold it tight it doesn't have to be ultra perfect yet now is the time when I'm going to put it under a stack of books and I have oh I have a big heavy dictionary a couple of encyclopedias some old computer science books really heavy books stacked way high and I found that if I do that while my paper is damp and wet and leave it in there for for oh I don't think I left that in there any this one under there any more than an hour and a half two hours and it just helps to shape it now I am going to go take it in there and I have four of these this was my fourth one I'm going to take this in I have another set of books heavy books where I put the other three or the other two and I'm going to add this one to it to make three and I'm going to leave them under that heavy stack of books for 24 hours and then tomorrow when I when I go to get them tomorrow they should be nice and and flat for sure so that I can start binding them in my book. <laughs> 